Today we'll be taking a closer look at one of the most iconic wristwatches in the known universe. This is not a G-Shock, this is an Iron Man. Let's get the essentials out of the way here. The Timex Iron Man T5K159 is shock resistant and boasts a 200 meter water resistance. This is a watch that is not afraid of the dark as it is armed with Timex's famous Indiglo technology. More on that later. Now, given its name, you will have guessed it has a bunch of functions that can be useful when exercising. It features a 100 hour chronograph with lap and split times, on the fly lap or split recall, a 99 lap counter, a 24 hour countdown timer, 30 lap memory recall, two time zone settings, daily, weekday or weekend alarm, and of course, time, day and date display. The Timex Iron Man has a durable and lightweight resin case and strap. Also a mineral glass crystal, which sits nicely recessed and is as a result also quite protected. Now the case width is 42 millimeters more or less and the height is approximately 15 millimeters with a lug to lug of 48 millimeters. Powering it all is a quartz digital movement. Now, if this watch looks familiar to you, well, that is of course because this is a throwback to the original and by now iconic 1986 Iron Man with improved functionality and durability. I got this watch on a whim as it was on sale and needed one for vacation anyway. Now while that is normally G-Shock or Seiko time for me, I switched it up for once with this Timex Iron Man. It's a very affordable watch but it has all the essential features and more that I might need. It's very easy to operate and the dial side start and split buttons are a nice change from the usual. Now the buttons are all of a nice practical size and are very easy to operate. The dial is extremely legible and I'm very used to Casio's digital displays and uh, well it immediately stood out to me how much bigger or at least easier to read this display really is. I'm not sure if the display itself is bigger, but the time display certainly seems to be. I mean, it's a real standout to me. The display also comes with Timex's Indiglo, which is pure fun in the dark. Now, what is Indiglo, you ask? Well, let's have a look at this old Timex commercial. We realize there still may be a few people who don't trust TV commercials. So, we came here. Father, hmm? which is brighter, the conventional watch light on the left or this Timex with the Indigo night light on the right? The one on the right. Thank you for your time. Oh, stay a while, my son. We don't get many advertising people in here. Now, Timex achieves this result by incorporating an electroluminescent panel as a backlight. So Timex's Indiglo feature provides even illumination of the watch dial, making it easy to read in any light. At night it is bright indeed and a really different experience from most light-up displays of pretty much any other brand. Note that with this new Iron Man only the active bars or whatever you call them, the little stripes on the LED display, only those ones will light up, so not the entire screen. I like this look, but it's quite different from the old one, where the whole display essentially lit up. Now, the Timex Iron Man was once lauded as an excellent sports watch and associated with one of the more grueling sport races that I know of, the Iron Man Triathlon. So should you wear this for your next race? Well, let's have a look outside here. We are now looking not at a watch, but at my bike, which I use all the time. It's a Gazelle van Staal bike. Relatively lightweight, with a fantastic and comfortable steel frame. It has these glorious Brooks touches as well, that fantastic cambium saddle and those handles. 
Now, cambium is way more weather resistant than the usual leather that Brooks is most known for. It's essentially a blend of vulcanized rubber and organic cotton. Perfect for the Belgian weather here, where it is 99% rain and 1% cloudy. Now, exquisite stuff, if I may say so. And this particular bike also features a three-speed Shimano Nexus internal geared hub with an old-school coaster brake. I love this bike, it never lets me down, and I have biked hundreds of miles with it at this point. But should I use this bike for my next Ironman triathlon? Well, I guess I could, but really, we all know, I shouldn't. So if targeting your best time for completing an Ironman race is at the top of your to-do list, then you are probably looking at something like this instead. A Garmin, a Garmin 4 Runner or a Garmin Phoenix, for example. These are packed to the gills with useful features and track so many metrics that can help you fine-tune your training. There is really no competition. So can you wear a Timex Ironman to complete your next Ironman race? Well, you could, but there are far better options nowadays. So anyway, on the wrist then. The watch wears surprisingly small and very light on the wrist. I can easily forget I'm wearing it. It is of course not a very big watch with its 42mm diameters, but it is on the thicker side. And that is also thanks to or due to that protruding bezel which then helps protect the screen and I think that is actually a nice feature. Now, when comparing this to, for example, this G-Shock, you can perhaps get a better idea of the watch's dimensions and see that it is indeed not too big at all. And in fact, due to the busy dial, it visually also wears quite a bit smaller than, for example, this Casio here. You can also hopefully see that the watch is indeed on the thicker side when compared to the G-Shock here. The strap is nice and comfortable and there are plenty of holes to fit all wrists and also to provide some welcome airflow. So one detail I want to mention is this catch on the strap. So it essentially holds your strap in place while having just that single keeper. It works extremely well, but almost too well. It's great during the day when you're wearing this as it really never lets go. However, when taking the watch on or off, I have to admit that I sometimes struggle to get this loose when compared to a normal keeper. To be clear here, I think this is a great feature and very useful. Now my wrist is on the smaller side with 16.5 centimeters and the watch certainly doesn't feel or look too big to my eye. I'm pretty sure this watch will fit any sized wrist, big, small, tiny, doesn't really matter here. Overall this is an excellent little watch offering great value. It's also a nice change from the usual G-Shocks for example. Now, have you ever owned one of these? Would you like to own one of these? Would you ever wear this for an actual race? Did you like my bike? Let me know in the comments.